All right, back with another out of the box review. This time we're moving into the world of Warhammer 40,000 with the newest version of the Eldar Fire Prism Grav Tank. Unlike tanks that we use, these guys, they prefer to fly. Start out with the clear sprue featuring the main crystal as well as the fo firing crystal for the main gun. I like the fact that they're molded in, in transparent color. The only thing I don't like about this being one piece is you wind up having to paint the surface whereas the larger crystal you could go ahead and paint from the inside. You get two canopies one for the turret and one for the cockpit. Both have a little targeting rectangle on them. The base is actually fairly simple. It's designed as a gaming piece, so you've got clear platform and then two support rods, basically designed to get it up off the table more than anything else. Sprues laid out fairly well. As with a lot of Games Workshop stuff, some of the sprue parts are standardized. This is also the same sprue, you'd, same main body sprue you'd find for the Eldar Falcon Grav Tank. But the details really, the details nice and crisp. Relatively little flash on it. One drawback to the Games Workshop kits, though is these really thick join points on the sprue. It does cause some problems, but not too many. Games Workshop also likes to try to include moving features in their kits, too. We move to the bottom of the tank. You've got your detail for your personnel bay, if you decided to show it open got some guns and sensors that would go on the bottom of the thing. These would be your intakes for the main engine and then the bottom of the main hull of the ship. Like I said, these two sprues are, are standard on pretty much any Eldar tank. Then you get the specialized sprue. This monster sprue is designed in this case for the fire prism which is what the kit's supposed to depict. You've got two pieces to your turret and then you've got the housings for your main gun, different back hatch because this one is not used as a personnel carrier. You've also got additional parts for adding options that are available in-game or if you're doing it like me to make it look a little more a little cooler the decal sheet again is pretty standard games workshop fare decals are laid out with the various insignia for the various known craft worlds as well as some other insignia for customizing. There's no real set scheme on the decaling. The, one of the biggest improvements Games Workshop has made in these kits though is the quality of their instructions. In this case, instead of using all drawings, they're taking drawings from the older instructions as well as inputting 3D representations of the actual parts. In this particular kit's case, we've got options to either do a fire prism or what they call a night spinner, which basically uses some nasty monofilament net. But it goes through the steps as you go through, showing you exactly how each part's supposed to set up. Again, as you come through, you've got some of your options, as well as the fact, you know, like I said, you use the new rear hatch. 
goes through all the assembly. There isn't really a painting guide except on the back of the box. In this case, depicting two possible color schemes for two of their stock color, their stock craft worlds. The red one here being Sam Han, if I'm correct. And the green one, I think, is Iandan, but I could be wrong on my pronunciations. Admittedly, at 50 bucks for this, it's a little spendy just for building on your own. They mostly intend these to build as part of your army. I build them because they look cool. 